Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. DJ here, welcome to Hands On SAP Dev. It's Friday 13th of December. It's to sound like a radio show now, so welcome. Thank you all for joining. Good morning, Freddie, on the bus, on the way to school. Uh, good morning, John, good morning, Elena. Good morning, uh, Helmut. It's great to see you all here. Um, a really, really dark and rainy Manchester morning. And of course, as, uh, as John, you pointed out there, it's a pretty depressing morning here in the UK, uh, given the election results. But, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll not talk about that and uh, talk about some <coughs> nice things instead. It's so dark outside. Um, I think this is the darkest it's been, if I remember rightly. Maybe maybe some of the early January hands-on SAP dev uh, episodes were this dark as well. Good morning, Mahesh. Good morning. Morgan uh, Gregor, um, yeah, some of the January ones may have been this dark, but it's uh, the sky is so overcast, uh, it's crazy. So I've had to put my angle poise lamp pointing upwards so that you can at least see me. Uh, so yeah, um, this is going to be the last live stream episode that I do this year. This is episode number 48, which means this is the 49th we started at zero, the 49th episode. I did think maybe I should do another one just to round it out with a nice, nice round 50. But uh, no, I think uh, I think 49 is okay. Um, if it's good enough for San Francisco, it's good enough for me. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do some uh, more stuff in relation to uh, SAP business rules. Uh, but we're going to sort of look behind the scenes and dig in a little bit more to where we were or where we left off last time we looked at this, um, uh, which was episode 44. Uh, so yeah, it should be, uh, should be good, should be good. I'm wearing my, it's quite cold, so I'm wearing my SAP for developers jacket, but underneath there I've got Run With Community. Yes, there we go, uh, Run With, where is it, that way, yes. Oh, the other hand. Run with community. Yes, it's really weird. Not knowing which is my left and which is my right. Um, do I start again on the 3rd of January? Is that, the, is that If that's a Friday, then yes. That's a good point, actually. I'll, I'll update the, um, the Hands on SAP Dev blog post, the main blog post. But yes, that's the plan. I'm back. I'm back at work, actually, on the Monday, the 30th. Uh, this is my last working day until then. So I've got next week off and I've got Christmas week off. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll start again, probably where we left off as well. Uh, maybe as a bit of a recap as well. So what have I got to share with you? Uh, well, yesterday something, uh, uh oh, oh, just John is saying, where do you get all this SAP developer gear? My SAP developers and open UI teacher is looking rather faded. Yes. My open UI five one is really super faded. I think I got my first one. Where did I get my first one from? Was it, um, Oh dear! Uh, I think did was it Simon Kemp that arranged created some T-shirts a long time ago with a QR code on that. That was an SAP UI five T-shirt. My Open UI five. In fact, I've got yeah, I've got an Open UI five T-shirt, and I've also got a Cloud Application Programming Model T-shirt. Um, I gave you yours in Barnsley on Barnsley project. Like, wow. Okay. In fact, I've got some T-shirts that I've not worn. Um, so, John, remind me, uh, I'll do some T-shirt giveaways. I've been sending stickers out to people via the post. So why can't I can send some T-shirts out in the post. I've got lots of Amazon envelope things that will protect those T-shirts. So, uh, Leo, good morning. So, yeah, maybe I'll do some, some T-shirt giveaways. Uh, let's, let's figure out how we can choose. Maybe I'll, I'll do a random, random choice. I've only got two or three T-shirts to give away. Uh, good morning, Volker. So, yeah, let's do that. John, remind me next year. John, you're uh, you're on for reminding me next year. Okay, so um, what I was going to say was yesterday was super exciting, as some of you on the channel already know. Let me just switch to <coughs> um, let me switch to my main scene. Uh, that should update automatically. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget, um, there's the SAP Developer Insights Survey, which were still running there's the link there i've got my uh my screen very nicely organized so i can actually type into the chat it's getting quite warm as well i'll take this off now um and um 
we're running that. I think we were originally running that. Uh, yes, until December 20th, or as we say in the UK, until the 20th of December. Um, however, I think we're going to push this out into the new year. But just in case we don't, please, if you haven't already, uh, fill that in. We've got lots of uh, great responses so far, uh, but we want more. So um, please uh, go to that insight survey. It takes you between five and 10 minutes. I did it, uh, it took me you know, six or seven minutes, I don't know. Uh, so it should be fine to do that. But yes, the most exciting thing that happened yesterday was that my friend and colleague, Mr. Max Schreifeneder, um, did a live stream. And um, I'm not going to, uh, there we go, That's, uh, there's the uh, paused. It's, he did a live stream, which was awesome. And um, yeah, you can catch, that, that was his sort of first test live stream. Uh, the future is conversational AI, as well as the future is terminal. Thank you, Vitaly, for that comment. Um, but yeah, it was really, really good. So well done to uh, Max for his first live stream. He wanted to get one out before the end of the year, and he did. So uh, watch that space uh, to see uh, more next year from Max. I think he might even be doing one, a little bird tells me, i.e. Max. He, he might even be doing one next week. I'm away next week, but he'll be doing one, I think. Uh, and it was awesome. So well done to Max for that. Um, yeah, look out for, if you're not already following Max on uh, Twitter, uh, please do so as well. And this also remi reminds me of a, a, a thought that I was having a while ago, which is because when I started live streaming, I, of course, you know, I have no idea what I was doing. And I did find YouTube a little bit more difficult to connect with, to get going with since then, because this was like in December, this time last year, since then, either I've improved or it's improved or we've both improved. Um, and now I've got no, no issues with streaming to YouTube. Um, so have a think. I'm not going to do a poll yet, but have a think whether we, the Hands on SAP Dev community, would be better served moving from Twitch to YouTube. I know, for example, that Pierre Dominique, where he's working right now, um, the client he's working at blocks access to Twitch, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, there are real great things about Twitch, but there are also great things about YouTube as well. So have a think about it, and then maybe in the new year, we'll, we'll make a decision as to whether to continue with Twitch or whether I should move over to YouTube, whether that's better for you. Because basically, you know, if it's better for you, then let's do it. If it's not, then you know, we'll stay as we are. So that was that. Yeah, so Max did an awesome live stream. Um, what else do I want to show you? I think that's pretty much it, really. Um, do we have any more news? No, let's have some coffee. Um, I'm I'm a bit under the weather still. Uh, I've still not got rid of this sort of fluy, um, virusy thing. Uh, so the coffee still tastes a bit weird. I'm not gone running today either or yesterday. That's how bad it is. Um, but anyway, let's get going. Uh, what time is it? It's eight minutes past eight over here in Manchester. And where I want to um, continue on with is where we left off in episode forty-four. Let's remind ourselves, actually, SAP Dev, um, replays. In fact, I'm going to move here. The way I've got it set up is I've got my um, 4K monitor divided up into four windows. Uh, each are, of course, 1080p. Um, but actually, I think the... Um, I think it's working okay. Uh, yeah, th there we go. That's better, I think. Um, and so I, I, I've got what I'm broadcasting here. I'm just broadcasting a quarter of the screen, but I've got my stream manager down here. I've got my light stream control panel here. So it's working well. Um, okay, so um, if we go down to episode 44, we'll see. Uh, where is it? Oh, a lot of episodes. Um, business rules in Cloud Foundry, setting things up. Uh, and what we did was basically go through the process of um, getting things to uh, in Cloud Foundry, in my Cloud Foundry trial account, getting uh, a setup that was more or less the equivalent of the setup I had in, um, in Neo. Okay, and we had some uh, really good questions and comments about 
the fact that yes, there is more work to do in Cloud Foundry to get to where we would normally be when we start out in Neo. And I think partly that's just the nature of Cloud Foundry. But I think that as Gregor, I think pointed out as well, um, you know, if we want to run business rules, the business rules manager, we've got to run, uh, you know, some service instances and also this app, which of course consumes resources. Um, and we, we had a similar issue, did, did we not? I remember um, way back when in the web IDE, when we had a build tool and the build process uh, required uh, some resources that were, you know, specific to our trial accounts and basically ate into that uh, that set of resources that we had generally available. So I'm hoping that um, this will change. Although with, um... okay, Freddie, have a great uh, day at school, work hard, study more German. In fact, next time you come on, um, you can you can speak German with all these amazing uh, folks here that uh, are in Germany right now, like Gregor and uh, Volker and uh, Leo as well even though Leo is uh, uh, only, uh, I think you're in Frankfurt, are you, Leo? Yeah. Uh, and uh, who else is in Germany? Uh, Helmut. Yes, of course. So, uh, yeah. And uh, there we go. And uh, what was I, oh, I going to say now? Oh, yeah, where was I? I um, uh, can't remember. Uh, God, this is what's going on. Please help me. Somebody, somebody help me. Anyway, yes, um, we're going we're gonna to start off where we, went, where we left off. Uh, oh, Frankfurt and still learning German. Yes. So, well, yes, we all, we're all still learning German, Leo. <laughs> we are indeed. Um, I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Um, uh, I was rambling on about something. Uh, oh, yes, about the um, the quota. That's right. And um, the, we, have, we have a higher quota in, in Cloud Foundry. We have a higher quota anyway, rather. Um, and I'm sort of getting, seem to be getting away with it at the moment, having, having to move things around. And uh, hey, thanks, Helmut. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, anyway, let's let's see how that goes in 2020. So where we left off was that I was struggling with uh, the build and deployment of the uh, managed projects app and related services into my Cloud Foundry trial account because I'd been editing the uh, mta.yaml file directly and hadn't remembered that Everything I'd named was business dash rules. In fact, why don't I bring up uh, the web IDE? Uh, where is it? I've got it here, actually. Um, and this is a, a specific link relating to the hands-on SV dev workspace. Freddie, very impressed with your um, keyboard skills on a UK keyboard, writing chus like that. Um, yeah, very impressive indeed. So um, yeah, let's just remind ourselves of where we are because what I wanted to do, uh, I had a look at this um, earlier this week and I thought it was fascinating. So I thought it'd be worth sharing. Um, I think if, you know, if you've been on these streams before, you'll know that what I like to do is understand what's going on in the background or understand what's going on um, behind the scenes just to better understand things. And I think in this particular case, as we'll see, um, having a better understanding of what's going on will help us generally um, in the cloud platform scenario and in Cloud Foundry with, with MTA and everything like that. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Anyway, here is the uh, project that we downloaded from um, the, that GitHub repo, uh, which we'll have a look at shortly. And um, we'd imported it to the Web IDE. I've made some changes to the mta.yaml, the multi-target target application configuration file. Uh, but what I'd failed to do was to remember that I'd called everything business dash rules, and this had been defaulted in the, in the uh, actual version that came down from the GitHub repo. This had been defaulted to business rules without a dash, which is fair enough, it's gotta be, gotta be some name. Um, and right at the very end of the stream, I had realized that, fixed it, but only fixed it in one place. I fixed it here, but of course this, in the um, description of this multi-target application module, business rules editor app router, which is basically the app that we're gonna deploy, this module depends on three services or three service instances. 
the HTML5 repo runtime service, which we're sort of familiar with from the Neo um, context. The business rules UAA service, of course, the um, access and authorization service. And um, uh, also the actual business rules service itself. Okay, And it's the business rules service that we created. We created an instance of the business rules service. Um, and we call it business slash rules, not business rules. Um, and so these require statements here, the names or the values for the name parameters are referring to, of course, things elsewhere in the file. Now, a little bit bigger. I'll uh, try and practice what I preach and you know make this bigger for, for everybody. There we go. And so here we've got our business rules editor HTML5 repo runtime. Um, we've got our... Um, We've got our business rules UAA, which is that one there. And then we're also then left with um, the business, uh, sorry, the business rules uh, resource, which is an existing service on Cloud, Cloud Foundry style existing service. And that's the thing I'd forgotten to change. Okay. Um, so what I want to do shortly is rebuild that. I'll rebuild it in the web IDE, but then we'll take a little bit of a detour and, and have, a, have, have a look at the detail of what happens when we build and what happens when we deploy. And we're also going to, I also want to take us on a little bit of a journey between the, the deprecated build tool and the new build tool. And we'll do it in the terminal just so we can see what's going on and also relate the messages we see in the web IDE to reality or to sort of, you know, hardcore terminal reality. Uh, so I hope that's going to be okay. Uh, hey, good good evening, Phil. Uh, not good to hear you still not well and not ring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, it's really doing me in. Um, uh, you know, I, I I sound a lot better. You know, I've not got the, the cold in my head in my face, but my body is like I've got some lumps in very weird places, gland lumps and everything. Um, I think I'm just generally run down. But anyway, we're going on holiday next week, so uh, uh, you know, relaxing hopefully. So. Should be good, but thank you. So why don't we start by, in fact, let's have a look at um, the cockpit, because I want to see, first of all, using the uh, Cloud Platform cockpit, uh, what services and resources I've got. Um, this beta sub-account I created, I think, in between then and now to play around with Cloud Functions, of course, inspired by Gregor, who has been doing this 25, uh, um, what's it called? Advent of Functions or 25 Advent, I can't remember. What's it called, what's it called Greg? Oh, my brain's not working. Um, uh, 25 Advents of Functions or something. Anyway, we're going to go into the, my trial sub-account, the one that's set up for me as standard and the one that has a Cloud Foundry organization pre-set up and connected to it. In that Cloud Foundry organization, <coughs> um, I've got a single space, dev, up to, sorry, yes, thank you, Gregor. 25 days of serverless. By the way, if anybody's doing the advent of code, good on you. I'm well behind uh, for various reasons, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, so right now, um, we don't have any applications, and the only service instance, or the only instance of a service we have is the instance of the business rule service we created last time, okay? So I finally got the um, business rules managed project app and related services into my trial account, but I've deleted them so we can do it again. So that's fine, that's great. So why don't we go back to the web IDE and do a build. But first of all, we'll um, build, uh, hello, 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 loading, loading, loading. Uh, we'll build using the, um, the deprecated tool. And most importantly, we'll hope, hopefully see that it works and then we'll study, we'll stare at the log output, um, and then we'll deploy it. And then we'll create a very, very small project in business rules just to see that it's there. And then we'll destroy everything and do the whole thing again, but from the command line. Um, deploy, uh, sorry, what am I doing here now? Um, oh, sorry, it's here, isn't it? Um, build, there we go. I was clicking on the wrong thing. So this is what we did last time. And so I'm gonna build this. Uh, and yes, as we know, it's going to be deprecated. We got, we got, we can use it until the thirty-first of May. Um, you know, why would we? But let's just do this for the sake of um, experimentation and learning. 
So here we go. So this is what happens in the web IDE. And I don't know, let me know whether you you feel the same. I mean, maybe, maybe you're different. Maybe you, you sort of understand all the error messages um, that, and all the, all the, sorry, not the error messages, all the messages that appear um, in the uh, in the console in Web IDE, but you know, in a lot of cases, I'm always thinking, oh, you know, there's all that stuff there. There's a lot of noise. I don't know what's going on. I don't really know how it relates. The Web IDE is this beautiful magic thing that happens in the cloud. But personally, I've never felt as close to what's going on, and I want to know what's going on. I want to get my fingernails dirty um, or get mud under my fingernails, as it were. Um, so. I took it upon myself to sort of have a look a bit closer, have a bit of a stare at what's going on here. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. So anyway, we've, we've built it. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, and thanks, John. I, I did see your, when I was uh, annotating this, I did see your message uh, last time when I was trying to figure out how to you know, toggle this uh, navigation pane. So yes, as, as I remember now, well, thank you, John, uh, just double click um, the... Uh, the file uh, thing here, the, the file tab name, um, and uh, let's bring back that thing there. Okay, so we started the build with the deprecated um, build tool. And as some of you may know, the deprecated build tool is the Java one. And we'll have a look where that is, and we'll download it and run it as well uh, locally. But basically, if, we, if I move this across a little bit, there we go. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the time. Um, blah blah blah. We're going to start. Um, we're going to start here, saying starting process CD project CF business rules editor, so which we're as in as in within the context of the Web IDE uh, area uh, file system area that is where my project is. Don't forget that the project is called CF business rules editor in my project directory, as it were in, in Web IDE, uh, and it starts. A shell script called Web IDE MTA Build. Okay, remember that name, MTA, Multi-Target Application Build, which of course was the first, uh, I guess the first shell script that created, and there was a, at that time only one uh, build tool available, which was the Java one. And then we got a whole load of output here, SAP Multi-Target Application Archive Builder 1.1.20, or yeah, 1.1.20. Uh, and it is a whole load of stuff with NPM, which is really interesting, uh, and, does all sorts of things. And eventually, having done some NPM install, uh, installs a load of uh, modules in, of course, as we know, in the node modules directory. And then uh, it sort of bundles everything up and creates an archive file, uh, which that it, which it place, places, according to, I guess, the details in the shell script, which it places in a subdirectory called MTA Archives, and it calls it Business Rules Editor, and then, which of course is you know, part of the name, uh, and then gives it a version, okay? And we can see that in the results here in our project, we've suddenly got this new folder called MTA Archives, Business Rules Editor 001.mtar, okay? So that's fine. Um, and we sort of understand roughly what's going on here. Um, but is this, you know, Web IDE only? We'll find out, right? This is the whole point. Um, but let's just go ahead and, uh, sounds like, what's that film called? I don't want you to go ahead and do something. Uh, let's deploy this MTAR file, this archive, uh, multi-target application archive file to Cloud Platform. Um, and we saw this. Uh, in episode 44, of course, my default endpoint is there. That's correct. That's the organization. That's my non-beta. That's a trial organization connected to the trial sub-account. I've got one space. So I'm going to hit deploy. And then, interestingly, we see further log messages in the console. Well, not interesting because well, that's where we expect to see them, I guess. Um, oops. And we can see this sort of deployment to Cloud Foundry. Deployment of the, of the business related project started. Deployment in progress. Okay, and it's given us already this endpoint here uh, that we've we've just selected in that pop up. So this is going to EU10, which is uh, AWS Frankfurt, in that organization in the dev space. And we should, if we go across to um, right there, 
uh, if we go across to here, we should shortly start to see uh, things appear. We should start to see those, uh, let's go back to the uh, MTA file itself. Let's just remove this for a second. It requires the business rules existing service, which is already, oh, there we go, which is already there, okay. It also requires this business rules UAA, okay, and it's given, it's been given some parameters in the, in the YAML uh, descriptor file. And it also requires, the, you know, an instance of the uh, repo runtime, okay, which is, um, uh, an, a managed service rather than an existing service, a managed service that you would subscribe to, for example. Okay, this whole idea of uh, service subscription is something that we know from Neo. So um, let's just have a quick look at the uh, console. We can see it's still deploying here. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the last message we saw anyway. Um, we, we've, we can see that the it's instantiated uh, <clears throat> an instance of the XS UAA service in the form of business rules underscore UAA, which was the name we gave it in the MTA YAML. And it's instantiated a, an instance of the HTML5 apps repo service, giving it this super long name that we've got there in the MTA YAML, uh, which is, what's it called again? Business rules editor HTML5 repo runtime. But also, of course, you know, these are services. We can't use these services directly as a, as, a, as a human. So if we look in the applications, we can now also see, that was empty before, we can now also see that we've got this business rules editor app router app that, that is exactly the thing that this MTA YAML is describing. And we can see there, there's the message project has been deployed. Let's have a look at the final messages. There we go. So this was the last message we saw at 8.24. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? There we go. Let's bring that back again. Um, but then we get a whole ton of stuff, repairing deployment files, checking for conflicting processes. How many, let me know on the chat, how many folks stare at this for any more than a couple of seconds? It's like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of noise there. I'm just hoping it works. And if something goes wrong, then you'll look at the detail, right? So I spent some time looking at this in detail and realizing that, um, obviously, when you think about it, this stuff we've sort of seen before, right? So that's what I want to do. Anyway, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, if I now go to the um, app itself, um, we've got this application route, which will take us into the app. And remember as well that what we discovered is that the actual project itself um, if we have a look inside here, there's nothing in there. Okay, there's some configuration. There's a package.json that describes the NPM modules. This is security configuration. This is the mtar that we've just seen. And that's it. There's no code. So what we're doing is we're bundling together the requirement of a couple of service instances and the business rules uh, uh, service instance as well. And then we're also pointing to something that already exists. Okay. Um, Excellent. Well done, Falker. Yes, uh, I, I like exactly. I like you like to do it manually uh, without the web IDE, and that's what we're going to do. Okay. So, Helmut, you're only looking at the details if you've got problems, and then it's helpful. Yes, it is. It is helpful, um, but you know, I, I'm not that good. And if if I just leave it to to when I see the errors, um, you know, I'm always I always feel as though I'm coming to something fresh. It's like, what's this? I don't know the patterns. My mind is not used to looking, staring at this shape of things. So I like to stare at stare at all the things. So that's what we're gonna do. Anyway, what I want to do before we do this though is I want to go into the, uh, the this app here. So I'll open this up in a uh, new tab. Um, what I've found, um, I've, I've seen this before, and basically there's some sort of cookie cookie stuff going on. Um, authorization wise so i'm going to get rid of actually the cookies uh remove there we go and let's just um bring that back uh let's copy that there yeah we'll, we'll do that there and oops let's go in and try that again oh hold on what i want to do i want to refresh i want to refresh the uh, cache oh there we go, there we go. perfect 
Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, ah, come on. I'm trying to avoid using a um, an incognito window. Uh, there we go. Let's just do that. Come on. Work. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. That's better. Right. So we've got our managed projects. Um, uh, App, okay, our sort of administration app. So Falker is saying, also need to understand the magic Web IDE does, especially when it... That is precisely, Falker, thank you. That's precisely what I want to do as well. I want to understand the magic that's going on because it all seems a little bit sort of, you know, remote. I mean, it is remote, you know, but it seems a bit too far. The stick, the stick that I'm using seems a bit too long. Um, so that's what we want to do. So I've got no projects, nothing on my sleeve. There's no projects here, but what I want to do is... Uh, also prove to myself, you know, with you, that, um, you know, once we re-destroy this um, app, you know, we've not destroyed the project in it. So I'm going to create a really simple project with nothing in it for now. Uh, the first business rule project, let's create a project called um, episode 48, that'll do, and give it a description. Hello. Right. Okay. That's fine. That's enough to have some bit of data. Um, as a project. Okay, so there it is. If we list it, episode, episode 48. Okay, fine. Let's go away now. And uh, let's start to do things. Let's let's start to do things in the terminal um, so that we can find out what's going on. So I'm going to do, bring up a terminal because we're going to remove the things in the terminal as well. There we go. So there's our terminal. And I've got this sort of little um, episode 48 folder, nothing in there at all. So I've got my CF command, my, uh, my Cloud Foundry uh, command line command, it's already connected to the appropriate endpoint, EU10. So what we'll do, in fact, yeah, why not? Why don't we do this? Um, let's just bring up a, um, a uh, another pane here in Tmux. And let's have a look at these services. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So why don't we do this? This is uh, this is something that um, I've not used for a while, but it's quite fun. I mean, we can, we can sort of do this CF services and uh, pipe that into. We, all we want is the first column, um, and we all, basically we want to list these sort of business rules, business rules UAA, and the business rules repo runtime. So let's use ORC to say, well, um, only print things out once you're in, you know, beyond the third line of output, and let's just print the first. Uh, column just to see the list of services. There we go. So there's our list of services. So now we can say um, uh, watch. And it'll default to two seconds. So let's have that um, in quotes. I think we've got to put in quotes, but we've also got to uh, escape that. So that will hopefully, there we go, that will hopefully do the equivalent of what we're seeing in the cockpit, which is to sort of refresh every two seconds. You can see here that it changes. There we go, to see what services there are. Um, we'll also, why don't we have another one? Um, because we can look at list the apps as well, can't we? Um, and we can do a similar sort of thing. So CF, um, oh, okay, uh, CF watch, uh, CF apps. And I, I, I played around with this just before, um, orc, um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we, it's actually the, the apps list after the fourth line. So number equal to greater than four, print one, there we go, fine. So that should list us the apps that are installed. There we go, there's the business rules, uh, it's an app router, okay? Um, is it possible to narrow the terminal window slightly? Ah, the chat is coming on the right hand side. Thank you, John. Uh, yes, it is, uh, is it? Oh, yes, it is. It is. Hold on. Let me uh, modify that. And maybe what I'll do, yes, in fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll unlock the chat, have a look at it, make it narrower. Um, yeah, there we go. 
Let me send that to live. Um, I never know what the best layout is. You can see up to ping. Thank you. <laughs> you can see up to ping. Um, so I'll I'll do that anyway. Yeah, let's do, let's do that. And the chat box, make that bigger again. Um, send to live. There we go. So hopefully uh, that will. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you, John. Um, yeah. Also, have a think about for our you know whether we go to YouTube and everything. Have a think also about whether we really do want the chat overlaid in the actual video or whether we're happy with it sort of on the side of, you know, in the Twitch UI or in the YouTube UI, you know, I never know whether to do that or not. Okay, so anyway, we're, we're monitoring that right now. Um, so let's go up here and CF uh, delete. Well, let's delete the app first. Um, so let's delete business rules editor app router. Let's just force it so we don't have to answer the question, are you sure? So there we go. So we've deleted it. We've got an OK, and that's disappeared now from our watch on the bottom right of the uh, pane. And we'll do a similar sort of thing. Um, CF delete service, uh, business rules UAA. Oh, I forgot to put force. Let's put yes. There we go. Deleting that service. OK. And we'll also CF delete service. Uh, business rules editor HTML5 repo runtime force. There we go. So far, so good. Um, yeah. Is that is that John? Is that font still okay now that I've made my screen share a little bit smaller, or do I need to bump up the font one more time? Let me know. Um, Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So that happened to me already this morning, um, but all we need to do is just run that again. I don't know what's coming on there. Um, you've got a big screen. What? Maybe I will up the font one more. There we go. Um, there we go. That's fine. So we've now, hopefully, uh, oh, it still failed. Let's try that again one more time. Yeah, I've been having some issues, seeing some issues in the back end, deleting this repo runtime service. But it doesn't matter because we're, what we're going to do what is also, oh, did that work? Uh, it deleted it. Yes, it did. So that should disappear. There we go. It's disappeared. So now all we've got down there is the business rules service, which we, we want to keep, of course. We've got our service keys related to that. Uh, thanks, Mahesh. Um, oh, OK, so you're watching from a mobile. OK, so I can, I can I'll bump down the font again. Bump down the font, is that a phrase? Um, so now what we'll do is we'll think about exploring the magic behind the web to use uh, Falker's great word, exploring the magic behind the web IDE. And what's happening is that it's uh, when we do a build, um, it's using this uh, deprecated, um, there we go, there's the application that, that sort of is now not there in that monitor. Uh, it's using this deprecated build tool. If we go to tools.handedondemand.com slash or hash cloud, we will see that down here somewhere, um, there is this that bigger multi-target app, uh, application archive builder, which is hard to say, um, and it's deprecated. This is the 1.1.20, right? That's quite interesting. That's what we saw in the logs. Why don't we download it, uh, download the jar file, and it's downloading there, showing folder. Um, let me make that folder, the folder, bring it into the into the screen share there, there we go. Um, I'm gonna bring it and put it into my Linux files, MCA archive builder, there we go. Uh, so now, uh, let's go into, um, blah, 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 move MCA archive builder. Let's move it to episode 48, there we go, so episode 48, there we go. So what we also want, and we'll do this from um, the web IDE. I think we'll do this from web because can I remember the name of the um, CF, new tab here, CF, uh, there, it, there it is, there, there it is, Tree, CF apps. If you remember episode 44, um, where we got that content to import into the web IDE to build and then deploy was from here, the business rules in Cloud Foundry sample application. This is the thing here. So let's download, let's start again, let's download it. Um, so there we go, there's the download showing folder. There's the folder there. Um, come on, 
And that's it. So we'll put that also into our Linux file. Don't, the reason I'm doing this, of course, if you're curious, is because, of course, uh, the Linux environment is a virtual machine. It's actually a container inside a virtual machine. But anyway, uh, that's that's a story for another time. So there we go. Let's bring that back up here and also move, um, what was it called again? CF Business Rules Editor to here. So what we've got in here is the jar file, which represents the code of the deprecated builder. And we've got our project. So why don't we first of all, let's have a look in um, unzip, let's list um, what's in there. And we can see, yes, okay, we need to create a folder. So let's make, make the uh, CF business rules uh, editor. We don't have to call it this, but let's call it the same thing as what's in the web IDE, just for um, sort of helpful purposes, clear. And now we'll unpack, unzip quietly CF there. Okay, so now we've got in here exactly what we had in the web IDE. So there's our MCA YAML. Oh, before I forget, I'll rename um, of course, the business rules, uh, business, oops, business, business rules, and also, of course, rename it here. Okay, that's fine. That's what we had to do as well. And note also that there's no archive at the moment. So let's try it. Um, uh, so what we want to do is I've already installed Java. I didn't really have it installed before. Um, and I'm using, oops, ah, oh, see, I can use control L normally, um, which I'm using SAP's JVM version eight, which I downloaded also from tools.anna.com. So I can now say Java, um, jar, uh, MCA archive builder, 1120.jar. And it'll tell us, hopefully, come on, my um, machine is ring. Oh, yeah, we go. it will tell us it's incorrect because I need to specify something. We can see here um, that we can say um, list targets. So what does that mean? You know, uh, and we'll, we'll see what it means. Basically, we can compile or we can build an MTA deployment artifact um, for either the new uh, environment as a target or Cloud Foundry or even XSA. What we want is Cloud Foundry. Um, so we'll do that. Oops. Well, we'll do that and say um, build target equals CF, and the command is build basically. So let's see what let's see what we get. Want a coffee? Now, does anybody recognize already what's going on here and recognize these messages? I can't believe it's already eight forty three. Um, does anybody recognize these messages? I'm going to bring up. Uh, where's the web IDE? There it is there. Oops. Oop. Did I do that? Sorry. Did I do something? There we go. Um, there's the web IDE. And if we scroll back up, we can see starting. See, this is also why you know, I, I much prefer to do it on the command line because I can sort of manipulate the command line a little bit better than sort of scrolling up and down. I mean, it's awesome that all this magic happens for us. Um, uh, but uh, I'd like to do it sort of manual on the command line. Um, so, Helmut, I've just seen, are you streaming? I'm, are you steaming? I'm steaming. It's very warm in here. Uh, I am. I am streaming from my Chromebook. In fact, I'm streaming from my Chromebox, okay, which is my Asus... Uh, Chromebox 3. It's an i5 with 8 gigs of memory. Uh, it's running the latest Chrome OS. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's brilliant. Yes, I'm streaming from my Chromebook. I I've not got rid of my MacBook. It's my work MacBook. And I need that to access some VPN stuff. But yeah, basically, I'm doing everything on the Chrome OS. It's awesome. Um, so there we go. So we can see SAP multi-tag application builder 1120, blah, 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 all these uh, node things here. So if I show you now, We've got exactly the same. I, I pressed I pressed the wrong key here. I, I aborted the command there. But so I have a look at this. There we go. We get the SAP multi-target application archive builder, um, node build JS. So we've got that. So now what we've got is this CF business rules editor mtar. So you can see that in the raw, we don't get exactly the file called CF. 
uh, or business rules editor 001.mtar, we get a slightly different file name. So I'm guessing that in that web IDE MTA build dot sh shell script, that's the thing that renames the file or gives at least gives the file um, this 001 version and also puts it in this MTA archive uh, directory. But this is a perfectly deployable thing now. So with that, why don't we deploy it, which is what we also did in the web IDE. Uh, it's 8.45, which gives us time to use, hopefully, the uh, the, the, the new, all new um, builder as well. Now, um, CF uh, plugins will show me, or will show us, what I've got installed in my local CF command line command in terms of plugins, things that are not standard with CF, um, you get out of the box, but things that have been built. And of course, in order to build, sorry, in order to deploy multi-target applications, specifically in our case to SAP Cloud Platform Cloud Foundry, we need a plugin. And that plugin's available. It's documented everywhere. Um, hey, Max, welcome. Um, you just see some job. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the one that... Uh, uh, came in exactly the right time. There's a bit of Java, but that's it. We're moving away from Java now. Uh, as you know, as, as I was trying to do, moves as far away from Java as possible. But anyway, welcome, Max. An awesome live stream yesterday. I've been telling people about your live stream. Um, so we've got this plugin that I've already installed that allows us to deploy. So I can now say CF um, deploy. I think it's just deploy. I'm just making this sort of sort of making this up. CF business rules, business rules, editor.mtar. And remember that right now we haven't got any uh, app at all, and we haven't got uh, those two services, the UAA service instance and the repo runtime service instance. So let's have a look to see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Something's happening. Uh, and in fact... If we have a look down here, oh, you can't see down here, but if we ha have a look down here at the deployment log, we're expecting to see deploying, blah, 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 targets, preparing to deploy, preparing deployment files, checking through a consistent uh, con conflicting processes, uploading the archive, starting the deployment, and all this stuff. So let me now switch back. And as we can see, we're basically getting the same thing. Okay. so. Um, we can see that it's processing, um, it's creating a service, it's processing that service there for the repo runtime, it's creating that service, and so on. So this is exactly what's going on um, in the background. This is the magic that's happening from the build perspective, but also from the deploy perspective. So what we'll do is we'll let this deployment complete. Um, we'll keep monitoring it, in fact, we can see already, I've just flipped back there um, to the other window in Tmux. We can see already that our, our watch of the CF services is showing us that we've got the UAA service and the repo runtime service already. And in fact, did that just appear while I wasn't looking? Um, we've got the app now as well. Although beware, um, of course, I'm, I'm chopping off most of the status of the CF um, app. CF app output. If we do that, we'll probably see. Um, that's what's the uh, yeah? There we go. The, the the state is currently stopped. Okay, and that's because it's not complete yet. First of all, it's got to scale it. Then it's got to stage it, and then it then it'll be eventually started. Okay, so that's what's happening. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's, it's now staged, and now it's starting. And hopefully, we should see. Um, in fact, why don't we go down here and modify this? Because why not? Oops. Um, uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Right. Fine. Um, print one and print two. Oh, there we go. Started. All right. I should have put space in between, but let's just let's just uh, leave it like that. So now, hopefully, we should be able to see. That, where is it? In there. There it is again. Okay. So if we go in there and let's let's open that just rather than go through the jiggery pokery of uh, cookies and everything, let's just open that in a, an incognito window. Let me bring that across to here. DJ, there we go. That's me. 
And hopefully we should, well, first of all, great success. We've built it successfully on the command line and we've deployed it successfully from the command line, doing exactly the same as what was happening from a magic perspective in the web IDE. Um, and there we go, we're running it. And also, of course, as, you know, as we'd hoped, as we'd expected, the little project that we'd created when we destroyed the administration UI, we haven't destroyed the project, that's still there in the business real service database. So it's still there, that's cool. Great, okay, so let's just wind back. We've got 10 minutes uh, and let's just wind back and do that again, but I wanna use the new uh, build tool. Um, why on my screen? Uh, oh, are you, ah, okay, yes. I'm just looking at a very, very delayed uh, stream there. I was just very confused myself there. Um, so let's just get rid of that and go back to our beloved terminal um, and remove those again. Because what we want to do is do the build again, but this time we'll introduce our ourselves to the new um, MBT. Okay. In fact, let me just go back to here and bring up blog post, which is all about the new MBT build. So it's quite, I mean, it's quite an old um, blog post now, you know, it's almost almost a month old. Um, it's by a colleague, Natalia. I mean, if you want to find out more about uh, MBT, uh, one of uh, one of our colleagues, of course, uh, Marius, uh, he is, you know, all over this, which is awesome. But yes, exactly. As Falker says, command line for the win. So let's go back to the command line. I keep, there we go, and remove that stuff. Uh, in fact, let's just fix that for a second. Um, and uh, let's put a uh, space in there, at least. There we go. Ooh. Print one and, ah, yes, of course, I've got that in there. So let's put a, um, oh, do I have to, oh, all right, I can't be bothered. I'm not even gonna try and escape all the things. That's fine, it started. Oh, it now. oh it's because I didn't put a I didn't put a comma. There we go. That's right. So now um, let's say CFD uh, business. Have I got that before? CFD. There we go. Did we get that? Oh, I can't do the service, of course. CF, uh, CFD. Uh, CFD. There we go. Delete the app first of all, um, and now we can delete the uh, UAA service. CFDS. UAA, uh, oh, actually, let's do that one first. Chat pause due to scroll, there we go, what's that mean? There we go, uh, let's delete that. And while we're waiting, um, in fact, let's go here, temp uh, episode 48, and NP, I think I installed it, um, list global, depth equals zero. So this is, this is, you know, we're all familiar with, or comfortable with this sort of thing because we've been doing a lot of uh, Node and NPM in the, in the live streams earlier this year. Um, in fact, let me explain that in a second. Uh, that, that's the one that failed. Let's just try that again. Let's keep, keep trying it until it uh, works. By the way, um, please let me know uh, whether or not, so either way, uh, whether or not you prefer this layout here that I can see at the moment with the chat and my face in one column and then you know the, the whole screen rather than you know a screen that's partially obscured. If you would prefer that on the live stream as the main scene, then let me know. I think that could work better. I could make the, the chat a little bit narrower and my face a little bit narrower. Uh, so let's just delete the um, uh, UAA service as well. Uh, so we're back to a deployable state so we can redeploy it. Uh, there we go. And in fact, is it still there? Yes, there we go, perfect. So now, if we have a look, so what I'm saying here is NPM list me the modules or the packages that are installed globally, but only go down one level, as in don't descend any further depths to see what packages of packages of packages are installed. And as you can see, I've already installed uh, MBT globally. That was just basically you know NPM install globally MBT, and that was it, okay? Um, I've got uh, CDS, of course, which I need to update on this particular uh, container, um, and I've got NPM itself. So now, um, if I go into, um, in fact, let me destroy RM minus RF CF business rules editor 
Uh, there we go. And yeah, let's now do that again. Make the uh, um, banana. Let's call it banana instead. No, let's call it. Let's call it the same thing. Make the uh, CF business rules editor and CD uh, into that directory. Uh, and now let's unzip it again. Minus quiet CF business rules dot zip. So we're now back to where we started from without any sort of built archive. We still got the MTA YAML, which I just remembered I've got to change again. Uh, there we go. Business rules uh, add a thing there. And where is it? There. There we go. So now all we need to do is MBT. And that's pretty quick, quick. MBT build. A lot faster than the Java. MBT build. I think that's all we need to do. Okay, so now let's just, while it's doing that, let's just go back um, to uh, the, where was it? To the um, the logs, there we go, the logs of the build. Oh, we've, oh, we've not even done a build in Web IDE this way. But why do we do that? Yeah, why not? Let's get rid of that. We can do it in parallel, can't we? So let's bring back this thing here, let's remove this as well. Let's do the equivalent of the web IDE, edit, delete. And we'll now say, instead of choosing build deprecated, we'll say build with cloud MCA build tool recommended. What is this? This is exactly what we're doing on the command line, which is MBT build and notice that where is it somewhere there we go the is it scrolled it scrolled away but basically look that thing there is almost the same as what we had before with the deprecated build but it's in a different place but it's also called not web ide mta build but web ide mbt build which reflects you know clearly somewhere in that script that shell script there's going to be a call to mbt build and just stare at this for a second you will see um, that that's exactly what we're seeing here. There we go. And it's built already, right? So the binary is fine, blah, blah, blah. And we've got an archive. And in fact, funnily enough, whoops, um, this, what? Where are we? What's going on? Uh, what did I do? I've destroyed something. Uh, temp EP. Right, what, what's going on? It created it there. Let's just run that again while I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Doesn't take too long. But as you can see, what it did, it did what we saw the original build tool do in the web IDE, which was... to create an MCA archives folder. And this has just been recreated by the new build tool. And it's called it business rules editor, not, I think was it, it was another name, wasn't it? Anyway, um, with the 001. And that's what's exactly happened here. So we've now got an MCA archives directory. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Ranger crash couldn't display the contents of the directory because I've done something crazy. So now we've got this MTA archives directory with the business rules editor 001. So finally, so we've just now rebuilt the whole thing, having downloaded it from GitHub, changed the name of the business rules uh, service name and reference. This time, MTA archives, business rules editor 001, mtar. We can deploy that again, and it's deploying. So hopefully now, in the final minute, we should see these things start to appear again. So the the whole idea of what we've been doing is sort of the demystification of the or demagicification demagic, of what's going on and what's been going on in the web IDE. So the web IDE has two build tools available to us to use. But those two build tools aren't magic. They're available for us to use on the command line as well. The first one is the Java one, the deprecated one. And the second one 
is a new one, the MBT one, which is a node package that's available from the regular NPM registry as well. Not even in the at SAP namespace on the SAP registry, which is quite interesting. And it's open source as well, and it's faster, and it's not Java. Um, so there we go. So we, we've now deployed it. Of course, we can see the stopped status here of the app because, of course, the deployment is uh, still happening. But you know, as you can see, what happened before is that it takes some time and it's scaled and then staged and then started, and that's it. So it's nine o'clock. Um, we didn't get a chance to do much messing around in the um, business rules manage projects administration UI, but I think um, it's important to understand how we got that administration UI and what was happening in the background from a magic perspective. I hope that was okay. Um, yes, and thank you very much for joining and thanks for being such an awesome community all year. Um, I, I, this, this is beyond my wildest expectations when I started live streaming. Um, you've been amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing this in the new year, which, which I will do. Uh, so happy holidays. And uh, yeah, I think Max, are you still on? Are you doing one next week? Um, uh, sorry, I've just seen your comment there about faster than Java. Anything's faster than Java. Um, so yeah, happy holidays and uh, have a great Friday, a great weekend. I uh, hope this was good. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye for now.